Hello, this is Hakuta Bean, and today we are going to read some spooky stories. Well, one spooky story from Creepypasta site. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. This being the story, I made a computer program to predict the apocalypse. It's not what you think. Let's begin. It began as a lark. Really, I woke up one morning from a dream about the apocalypse. No, not a wild west apocalypse. Exactly how the world was ending wasn't clear. I just knew that it was. So I enrolled in the auto shop class at my local tech education center. I figured it would let me fill for supplies. Stockpile things like spark plugs, brake pads, and alternator. By the light of day, it, the idea seemed silly. When half the world is dying and nobody has gas, auto parts are trying to be... You're going to be lying around everywhere. Yours for the taking. Good luck trying to use them. But when I told my partner Max, he said there should be somewhere for people to call in such streams. A database that would compile on people's streams about the apocalypse. See what the collective unconscious could tell us. Sound like a fun idea, and easy to do. I threw together a database and some simple code to extract themes, put it up on a web, and figured nobody would find it. A week later, based on 24 replies, the hive mind was recommending we stockpile assault rifles and high-capacity magazines. Makes sense. It seemed too obvious to have come out of people's dreams, even if my sample size was pathetically small. So I looked at a few of the entries. Here's a representation in a here is a representative example. I am a ninja swordsman with a cybernetic arm and with an AK. I am commander of an elite team of assassins. We shoot zombies in the head. Wow. I was struck up by two things. The first being that I'm a god... I'm a damn good coder to be able to extract themes from the writings of the illiterate. The second was that the writer's dream looks an awful lot like a daytime fantasy. Some others were obviously not dreams. <sighs> I can already tell you what's probably going to cause the apocalypse. It's probably um, corporate greed. We should get lots of ammo and guns, but mostly ammo, because use use lots and it's hard getting more. Put uh, lots of sandbags around your house and lots of food and water in your basement. There was only one that showed any creative thinking, not to mention English grammar, but it was disturbing. You will need to build a defensive perimeter around your base of operations. If you don't have, have a place in the country, I don't recommend trying to get one. Everyone will want one, so the ones that aren't well defended will be taken over by someone who will defend them. Instead, you should burn down all the, neighbor all the neighboring houses to give yourself at least a full block of unbroken line of sight in all directions. Whether that's good advice or scary, it was clear my dream was corrupted and uh, my data was corrupted, and people's actual dreams were lost in a mismatch of fantasies and advice. I explained my problem to Max one an evening over dinner. Wait, you actually did this? You asked. I, I shrugged. I thought it would be fun, but I need to figure out how to stop people from entering stuff that isn't their dreams. Maybe instead of a submit button, and add a query? This comes from a dream I had. Yes? No? Maybe, Max said thoughtfully. But if clicking no means they don't, don't get submit, some people will just click yes. Max was a therapist who worked in the local high school. He had a few illusions about people's ability to follow directions. Maybe instead of yes, no, you give people a menu to source their contribution. This comes from a dream I had. This is my recommendation of best practice. This is based on the Bible or another religious source and other. You always see an other category for the person who says, this is my 
recommendation. This is the right way to do it. I considered this. It made sense. Instead of stopping people from entering non tree material, I could get them to flag it and thank them for their contribution. Then it would be a simple matter to filter the non tree material from the results. It only took a moment to add the query and the filter. Then my problem would be how to get enough people to participate that I had a reasonable sample size. I'm good at coding, not so good at marketing. I checked back a week later, and Trap kept whittled to a dozen hits, of which 75% had been flagged as recommendations. Given that I'd had to toss the original 24, this left me with nearly nothing. A week later, six more hits, none of them dreams. I gave the project up as a failure. What inspired me to check back nearly three months later, I can't say. It may it just been and that popped into my mind, for whatever reason. And I thought, hey, I wonder. But I checked. Over 36,000. The filter explained what had probably happened. 84% were based on the Bible. Some of us posted a link to an evangelical group, and they had great fun posting, quoting Revelations and Daniel. But with all the, every posting, 12% have been inspired to not Bible based recommendations, and 4% and had used the site as as intended. 4% of 36,000 is 1,400 entries. So what did you find? Mass asked when I told him of my success. What does a hive mind tell us about the, about the coming apocalypse? Well... This was the awkward part. It's not clear. I don't get. I didn't get many hits on the likely candidates. Epidemics were at eight percent, even though we aren't far out of COVID. If I lump drought, flood, cataclysmic storms as environmental issues, I get maybe nineteen percent. Nuclear war was only three percent. But up to nine percent if it was war all sorts. Famine was eleven percent. He'd met me for lunch down on Boston Common. I was scrolling through the results on my laptop while he shared his sandwich with the ducks. This probably explains why he's so skinny. So now the fourth horseman tops 11%, huh? Max asks, what about wild animals? I stared at him. Why did you ask? Oh, it's from Revelations, if you read it. The horsemen actually aren't named famine, war, and pestilence. The fourth horseman who is named Dead is given the power to kill with famine, war, pestilence, and wild beasts. Somehow the first three charges got made into the names of the first three horses, and the fourth charge got left off. But it's in there officially. What the ways to die at the end times? Well, that explains it, I said. What? Max asked. How high did Wild Beast score? 18%. More than war and epidemics put together. But I think my sample was skewed to evangelical or Christians. I explained how my responses were are overwhelmingly dominated by people quoting the Bible. I reason that many of those reporting their dreams might come from the same communities. Nah, I don't think so. He tossed another bite of sandwich to an impressive male mallard who cocked his eye critically at Max. As of, as of to say, Don't you know Brett Ed isn't good for ducks? Are you trying to poison us? Why not? I asked Max, not the duck. Well, you know, I've got a, a couple of cousins who were born again, right? I did. You know, one thing they don't appreciate... It is for an unbeliever to tell them what the Bible really says. They don't dream of dragons, there's a dragon revelations. 
Some, I said. I wasn't sure how to classify some of them. If they said beasts, I grouped it with wild animals. But if they said the beasts breathed fire, I grouped it with dragons. Then there was one that was the heir of dinosaurs. Was that a dragon or a wild beast? Or a duck, Max said. Ducks are descended from the T-Rex. I think that's chickens as well. That's very helpful, Max. I think this one is channeling his ancestor. It looks like he wants my fingers more of my sandwich. Actually, the duck was glaring at me. He brought us all a couple steps closer. I turned the laptop around so I could see there was nothing behind it. The duck lunged out his head and tried to peck the keyboard. I snatched it out of reach. Hey, that's not edible! The duck is, is, is trying to keep you from undoing it as well. I'll tell you what, I have a couple of students who are well connected online. I'll see if they can promote your project. Maybe we'll, we'll correct the Bible bias in your sample. The smart thing would have been to give up on it. It was a silly idea after all. But I was curious if the results would change. I avoided thinking about it for another month and then checked back to see what would happen. Apparently Max had known the right people. I was now over 80,000 responses. And nearly 45% were actual dreams. When you consider that my original Bible thumpers probably still made up 40% of my sample, that meant the great majority of Max's people had filled it out correctly. But the weird thing was that when I ran my sorting routine, the percentage is didn't change much. Dragons were down, climate change was up, wild beasts also rose to 20%. It's hard to say why, but this irritated me. I suppose I would see a, a logic of it. War, climate change, or war and climate change, those were the big threats to Earth. The eruption of the Yellowstone on volcano could do it. The giant impactor is always a possibility. There's only ever been one planetary collision that threatened all life on Earth, the one that killed the, the dinosaurs, but it wouldn't have to be that massive just to bring down civilization. There are similar thoughts to a super plague. Historically, even the worst plagues haven't killed more than a third of people. But the modern world is built on such a complex structure of global communication and transport. A significant disruption will cause a cascade of disasters. Then you're black that these survivors lived much closer to their farms. They didn't have to contend with the cities built on the assumption that food could be delivered from thousands of miles away by burning fuel from wells on the far side of the world. Their farms weren't dependent on labs to make genetically engineered seed in broad spectrum fungicides. But wild animals? Seriously? Even if every dog in the world instantly went to Cujo, some locked doors and automatic weapons would quickly end the crisis. A zombie plague seemed more like likely. I mean, I don't really like the zombie thingy at all. Especially not literal Walking Dead zombies because... And by literal Walking Dead zombies, I mean like literally Walking Corpses zombies because it scientifically could not ever happen. And it actually bugs me. All that required was some unknown mechanism, alien microbes or whatever. There was plenty of unknown in the world, but wild animal apocalypses didn't make any sense. There wasn't enough wilderness left in the world to threaten humanity. All the people all in the world were total um, oh, eight, 60 megatons of carbon. All the wild mammals, every blue whale, well, elephant, mouse, and pygmy shrew, and every wild bird totals just 9 megatons. We outweigh them 7 to 1. The other thing that bothered me and my data was the unclassifiable dreams. Fully 42% and fell into this category. That was enough, potentially, to make any response a majority. No statistician would take my results remotely seriously with such a large unknown. I had to find some way to sort these responses. Manually sorting them was hopeless. There were over 16,000 of them. That would take 
Take weeks, after which I'd probably have another 16,000. Maybe I could come up with some tweaks to my code. My problem was short entries like this. They came from the water in a line. One followed the other. Terrible. Terrible. It could mean anything. Aliens, lobsters, killer frogs, Russian frog, augment, sub-launch nuclear missiles, ants, or this one. Toothless. They swallowed us whole. None survived. Maybe those killer frogs again. Frogs don't have teeth and they swallowed you whole. Of course, the same could be said for owls or mudslides or tidal waves or flying saucers. We fed them in the park, and they killed us. Pigeons? Homeless people? The ducks? The other thing I got out of this effort was a new category. They Undefined. Which actually became the highest scoring category of all, all at 31%. But considering that it was doubtless a polyphyletic category, that didn't mean anything. All I accomplished was splitting my other group into those I mentioned a day and those that didn't. The solution, of course, was AI. I could contract act with an AI vendor to process my results. My simple filtering routines were built around specific words, and depending it on my ingenuity to think of auto variants and mutations. I might search for killer frogs using frogs and toads, or if some when I accidentally typed fog instead of frog, I'd classify it under weather, and I might be able to tell the difference between we could see them in the terrible icy fog, and the fog flicked out on its tongue, snagged four people, and swallowed them whole. Contracting AI meant spending money, but I could afford it, and I was hooked. I want to make sense of this. Maybe the wild animals were metaphorical. That would make sense in dreams. You don't often dream exactly what you're thinking about. Like, sometimes I dream about speeding down a crazy highway. It's like eight lanes wide. I didn't going much too fast, and it's constantly splitting against the different directions and combining with other highways. Sometimes it's dark, or the windows are fogged, or I'm too short to see over the dash. These are not dreams about driving, these are dreams about my life running out of control. Maybe the animals were about something else. Maybe an, an AI could translate some metaphors. It turned out to be more difficult than I imagined. I found a company that would take it on, but it needed me to give it samples of dream interpretation to extrapolate from. I tried doing some myself, then I dug around online, trying to find some professional samples. The challenge here was to avoid anything with fraud fraudulent orientation. I didn't want to discover that the end of the world was a giant penetrating phallus. There were are plenty of modern samples I could find, even after I exclude the Hundreds of Fruit Loopian schools of thought. I also dug up some from Young, Erickson, Vygotsky, and their devotees, fed on to the program, then I just had to wait. While I waited, someone broke into our, our apartment. It wasn't the first time. Our apartment door is unfortunately at the end of the hall, around a little bend, so it's a private little nook for people to hide while forcing the door. But this one was weird. To begin, they ha hadn't come through the door. They'd come through the second story window. Also, they didn't take anything. Granted, Max and I don't have a TV after the third time, we just didn't buy another. We make do with my laptop. For similar reasons, we don't have many uh, other re high resale items. My laptop was with me at work. But usually they find something to make it worth their while. It wasn't for lack of trying either. They'd opened every cabinet and cupboard, every closet and drawer, pulled everything out and made a mess of things. The policeman who took the room apart had a couple of ideas. This reminds I'm sorry, this reminds me of, of people who knock over small-time drug dealers. So I, I'm, 
I, I, somebody thinks there's a stash of oxy, Oxycontin in the house, they'll go crazy looking for it. He gave us a critical eyes. You think we're drug dealers? Max looked at me. We both started laughing. The policeman laughed. No. No, I don't. Although I wasn't entirely persuaded, he had been fishing to, to see what we'd say. Do you have any documents or heirloom? Am I that any family member or acquaintance would want to get a hold of? He asked. Not that I can think of. I was still laughing. Well, I've got the family jewels, but I always take them to school with me. Policeman stopped smiling. He went to the window and stuck his head out. The thing is, I don't get how they got in. We're guessing it was the window, Max said. Knock it off, I whispered to him. The cop had already hinted that he suspected of, us of hiding drugs in the house. The last thing we wanted to do was piss him off or make him look for an excuse to charge us with something. This is the street side of the building. They weren't going to put a ladder up. It's a tree branch someone could have jumped from, I said. The cop scowled. In a comic book, maybe. Does anyone else have a key to your apartment? My mother, Max said. Even if she did want to search through all my stuff, she would definitely have cleaned up, up after herself. Ask her if she's lost the key, he said. I don't think anybody came in. In that window. I think someone came in through the door that, and then broke the window to make it look like a robbery. I think you should uh, think through who you who know or might have wanted something of yours. Give me a call if you think of anything. It was a disturbing thought, but neither. Max nor I could come up with any relatives who would be up for burglary. I asked about his born-again cousins. Well, they pray at us, Max said, and write nasty letters. They're good at nasty letters, but you know, thou shalt not steal. <laughs> yeah, like that really matters to ooh, 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 Christians when they, they think they're in the right. They're willing to contradict their own Bible if they think that it's for the greater good. Look at the ones who murdered, even though, oh, apparently it's against the rules of their religion. A week later, I received a disturbing email from the AI vendor. They were going to be delayed in fulfilling a number of contracts due to the unexpected death of their lead engineering engineer in a plane crash. I'm not ordinarily paranoid. Really, I'm not. But a week after the carrier's break-in, I was still looking for some explanation. I hadn't really formed any logical thought like someone killed him to prevent me discovering the nature of the apocalypse. I just wanted to know if it was possible the burglar could have learned who my vendor was during the break-in. I wanted to rule out the possibility, really prove to myself there couldn't be a connection. So I opened up the photos we'd taken of the mess, but we were trying to figure out if there was anything worth claiming from the insurance. There wasn't. I saw it in the very first picture, the receipt I had printed out, lying square in the middle of the study floor, detailing exactly what I wanted them to do. So then I caught up the news reports, and yes, the name on the receipt was the lead engineer who had, had died. But the news, news reports were reassuring. The plane had not crashed due to terrorism, bombs, or mysterious mechanical failure, but due to a freak accident. Birdstrike. Hmm. During takeoff, the plane had sucked two Canadian geese into the jet engines. 
one on each side, both engines had failed catastrophically. The planes had gone straight down. It was a pretty freakish accident, though. The article said that while bird strikes are a known aviation hazard, there were no record recorded instances of a simultaneous hit on both in engines. Still, it ruled out the possibility that one of Max's born again cousins intended on stopping us from disproving revelations and taking out a contract on the software engineer. Or not, Max counter when I told him. Maybe they prayed really hard and got gods to stuff those birds into those plane engines. Right, I rolled my eyes at him. If they could do that, they could cure you of your, your sinful lifestyle, too. I don't know. I think earlier in the story they were talking about birds and other wildlife being a part of the apocalypse, and now here's wildlife trying to stop you from figuring that out. Right, I rolled my eyes at him. If they could do that, they could cure you of your sinful lifestyle, too. More recently, there actually was an unusual crowd of migrating birds in Boston. The birds were so thick that they were intimidating the smaller dogs that people usually walked in the park. And the city was having trouble cleaning up the mess. It was so bad, Max and I had moved our usual lunch day to a cafe away from the park. Oh, they're on a date. That's so cute. Three days later, we lost our internet connection. It was a freak accident, they said. Simultaneously, black ducks had caught had got out caught on seven different relay stations around Boston, electrocuting themselves and throwing out systems and bringing down the whole network. Dang, birds are going crazy. Particularly ducks and geese. There's coincidence, and then there's two ridiculous but similar coincidences in a row. Max, I asked him when he got home that evening, are geese a kind of duck? How should I know? I can't get online. Or how far would we have to drive to get somewhere we can connect to the internet? He shrugged. I don't know. Framingham? Let's go. Ordinarily, Max doesn't like going out on school nights, but I think he heard something in my voice. He said, okay, and we drove out to Framingham, found an internet cafe, and got online. Sure enough, my results were waiting for me. Most common theme of uh, apocalyptic dreams, ducks. Duck imagery was the most, most probable reference in 48% of reported dreams. Look at the breakdown, it became even more or disturbing. Wild animals, ducks, 48%. Wild animals, avian, undifferentiated, 6%. Wild animals, air breathing aquatic animals. Undifferentiated, 5%. Wild animals, all other categories, less than 1%. Which is to say, 59% of dreams either reference ducks or an animal that could be a duck. Most any dream that featured wild animals either was or could be a duck. Fully 82% of dreams were judged not, con not inconsistent with ducks. War was a close second at 42%, but in close explanation, that, that was no research. Reassurance. War. Human versus human, 7%. Human versus extraterrestrial, one less than 1%. Human versus wild animal, 30%. Human versus undifferentiated, 5%. In other words, all but 7%, 70, 7% of that 42% could still be about ducks. There was a similar breakdown for divine wrath at 36%. Divine Wrath, Demonic Beans, 5%, Fire, 3%, Earthquake, Tidal Wave, Flood, Other Environmental, 1%, Wild Animals, 15%, and Undifferentiated, 7%. Environmental devastation was relatively duck-free, but was only a theme of 22% of dreams, and even 7% of this included interspecies competition. 
There was one glaring blind spot in my dream survey, of course. When will it happen? I don't know. Dreams are no help with questions of timing. Everything in dreams is present tense, but now that the plan is revealed, I think it will be soon. So yeah, Max and I are now living in an undisclosed location, somewhere far away from any pond or migration route. I have dismissed the whole thing as a lark, a ridiculous project that meant nothing. I mean, just because people everywhere are dreaming about it doesn't mean it's true. No one's ever proven that dreams predict the future. I'd have left the whole thing off. But the ducks believe. I think that was supposed to be a, a little bit more intimidating than it actually read out. Well, that was an interesting story. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!